Hey, it's Eric. And Lex. And you're listening to the Cutting Room Floor Podcast. It's a weekly conversation devoted to diving deeper into the messages that were preached right here in our church on Sunday morning. And an authentic space to say law as we allow the Word of God to work into our everyday lives. So hey, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. Why don't you make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a thing about what's happening on the Cutting Room Floor Podcast. So let's lean in and listen to today's conversation. Well, welcome back to the Cutting Room Floor podcast. Hey, we're so glad that you're joining us today. We are in for a great conversation on all things Moses. Moses. Oh yeah, you didn't see that coming, did you? It's going to be a great time today. We're picking up on the cutting room floor, kind of what was left on the cutting room floor uh, where we were as a church this past Sunday, kind of diving into a new collection of messages all about the book of Exodus and really a character study on the life of Moses, a man with some great success and victories that we can learn from but also some great failures, some great fears that I also think we can learn from. And uh, we're going to dig into the early days of Moses' life, talk a little bit about this whole season when he was on the run. He had made some mistakes, was wrestling with his identity, didn't know who he was, had no idea how in the heck God was going to restore him and bring him back to where he was called and uh, meant to be all along. And it's going to be a great conversation today. Hope you get so much out of it in your life, your work, your family. And uh, let's dive in. Let's dive in. To the cutting room floor today. How you doing, my love? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. Good to be with you. Good to be with Happy you. Happy Monday for us. Happy Monday. Yeah. It's been a good Monday, actually. It's actually, it's been, been a good start fantastic to Fantastic Monday. It has. Yeah. Why? Like, tell me about that. What does that mean to you? Well, our kids woke up a little bit later than their normal 5.30 yeah, since the time great. change. So that that's been great. really nice. We slept in, right? Until mm. 6.15. Mm-hmm. A little sleep in action. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it's been a good morning. And I loved your message yesterday. You opened up our collection, like you talked about called a leader lessons from a leader on the run yeah and um kind of brought the story of moses the exodus story to our attention mm-hmm. reminded a lot of people in the room of kind of like the history of it yeah. right and i think that doing a character study is so fun because there, it's like two aspects two two important parts of a character study in a series like this is one just biblical history like biblical literacy sure. knowing what the story of the old testament is how it applies to us so yep. like one it's learning like what what actually was moses's life and how did god use him and then two it's being able to draw those principles out for us yeah. today right to help us as we follow god mm-hmm. so i feel like it's two part was awesome yeah. i feel like i learned a lot yeah. um yesterday and your points were um talking about that there's a time for there's a time for there's Come a time on, for timing no, no 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 how do you work <laughs> how do you phrase it there's a time for timing there's a time for timing uh, that, that's Lesson, next trusting week. God's timing. Yeah, trusting God's timing. Trusting God's training. Nailed it. Crushed and trusting it. God's sending. Sending. Nailed it. Uh, so I thought it was really good. Yeah. Good, good. Mm-hmm. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> like when you just leave a pause in a conversation, you're it's hoping like, the other person will like pick it up. It's like when somebody's like, I love you. And you're like, thank you. You're like, thank you <laughs> thank for expressing you. your feelings. <laughs> uh, no, that's great. I Well, listen, I enjoyed it. I've been actually really looking forward to this for... Quite some time. I think I read through the book of Exodus. Um, Which, tell us the real name of that book. <laughs> the real name is These Are the Names. In Hebrew. The Hebrew name of the book of Exodus yeah. is not Exodus. No. Rather, it's These Are the Names. All right, church, let's open up to the book of These Are the Names. These Are the Names. <laughs> uh, but the Greeks later renamed this book to Exodus, talking about the exit that the Israelites had, right, uh, out of Egypt. And uh, But no, I've really been looking forward to it because I love Old Testament um stories like this like yeah. there's a lot of different types of literature in the old testament there's poetry there's history there's prophecy um i really like like the history aspect of the old testament and, and the narrative style yeah. of, of scripture where you're literally walking through a story you're like getting into the brain to the heart to the yeah. you know things that happened and to the um, triumphs to the challenges yeah and to the so bits of the palace. Uh, to the bits of the palace, baby. Um, <laughs> but no, really, I found it just so fascinating. Like, honestly, like, as a Bible nerd, like I just really enjoy it. It's so it's so much fun for me to read that, to engage in it, to learn. I feel like God often will speak to me mm-hmm. personally yeah. through character studies like we're doing with the book of Moses. Uh, obviously, you know, I think there's sometimes some overreach where people start seeing sure. themselves into Scripture We all think we're much. Moses. Exactly. Right. We're like, okay. Or like, you know, yeah, there's yeah. like the classic David no, and Goliath. We pull from Moses. Yeah. And like, we all see ourselves as David, but what if and sometimes we're Goliath? Goliath? 
Uh, so I think sometimes you got to be careful how you read yourself into scripture. Totally. Um, but I do think seeing ourselves through the eyes of Moses is just so uh, fascinating because you get to see not just, again, his victories, you get to yeah. see his failures. And, um, and really picking up in the early days of his life, he went through it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what really stuck out to me is like the first 80 years of the life of Moses are like kind of two polar two opposite yeah. experiences. The first 40 years, he's a Hebrew, a uh, Hebrew slave, but is raised in the palace. Mm -hmm. And all of us are reminded of like the Prince of Egypt movie. And, you know, those like the way that movie told that story, which is a great film, by the way. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it. You've never seen The Prince of Egypt? I don't think I've ever seen The Prince of Egypt. Really? No. That can change tonight. We should watch it. Okay. It's a great... Is it, like, could Olive watch it? Uh, it could be a little dark okay. for a three-year-old. <laughs> the plagues and all. Like... Um, no, like a 10-year-old could probably handle it. I don't okay. know. I, did, I thought it was a cartoon. It is a cartoon. Okay. But it's not, it's like an, it's like it's a, an adult cartoon. It's like a tween cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not quite for a teenager. I think a three-year-old might want to stick with like Veggie Tales version. Okay. Um, but me and Noted. you can watch it. Um, hey, I'd hit it up. But anyway, so you kind of think of those images. But then the next 40 year of his, years of his life, after this pivotal moment, it's like this game-changing moment in the life of Moses. Uh, he then runs from his Hebrew identity. Mm. He runs from his Egyptian upbringing. And he goes to this land called Midian, which is like this farming Mendin. desert, yeah, Mendon, farmer desert land where um, it kind of seems like his whole life has like crashed. Like he's extremely disappointed, disillusioned. He's discouraged. Like, I think kind of comes to this place like, God, I'll never go back to my home. I'll never see my right. family again. I'll, I had these aspirations of like redeeming the Israelite people. I tried to start a revolution. But God, I messed it all up mm -hmm. and look where my life is. Yep. Look where I am. And um, and he wrestles with that and yeah. he has to kind of come to terms with that. It's not just a month. 40 years. It's not just a day. It's not just a year. Oh, I was a hard we year We can barely wait a year on God. We're like, God, where are you? 40, 40 years. years. Yeah. And really he learned so much. And it can seem like on the outside, like, God, where are you? Like, God, we saw you at his birth when you kind of miraculously saved his life. Mm. And then we see you now at the end of these 80 years when you meet him in a burning bush. But where are you in the middle? Right. And I think the truth is God's right there right all there. the all yeah. along. God's developing him in the palace. God's training him in the desert. God's, God's doing so much. And I said this line yesterday that, that resonated with me and I think some others, like just because you feel like you're in a desert doesn't mean you've been deserted. Right. But rather sometimes God does his most important work yes. in Don't our hearts and lives yep. mm -hmm. in wilderness yeah. moments. And, and so I think for, for me, where I found encouragement in my own story is a God's working in every season. And, uh, and hey, the grass isn't greener elsewhere. Yeah. It's greener right where you are. And, uh, and you know, Moses had these big ideas of what he could do kind of self-produce, try to self-start right. an Exodus experience right. before it was time. And so I think we've got to learn to wait on God's timing. I think we've got to learn to trust God in the seasons of our life where we're not necessarily exactly where we want to be, Right. where we haven't necessarily gotten the promotion, reached the mountaintop, gotten married, had the kids, like whatever the aspiration is, right where you are, God's there too. Yep. He's working. He's, he's forming in you character. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, some of that's a little bit like cheesy, Maybe it's simple Christian teaching, but like, again, your calling can only take you so far. Right. It's your character that will keep you there. God's not looking for famous people. He's looking for faithful people. God doesn't need to market you. He yeah. wants to mark you yeah. <laughs> with his hand and anointing and spirit. A lot of that kind of stuff yeah. happens when you're not in the public eye, when you're cake taking care of some sheep and it seems like nobody notices. Um, and so I, I think there's so many takeaways. Like it's, it's, you know, I don't want to re-preach. I just feel like for me, there's great encouragement. Yeah. There's hope that God's got me. Absolutely. There's some wisdom and, and lessons that I need to learn yeah. from Moses and in, in his whole experience. And, um, so yeah, I don't know. I think there's I a lot there, that. right? I don't want to no, ramble. I think there's a lot there. And I think that, I think that the temptation of a message like this is the people who can count themselves out of it because they think that it looks like a certain way, like, oh, I'm hidden and then I'm going to have this 
platform role. Or, right. It's like, no, there's a lot of people that are a part of our church family that are like, I, I, I'm doing the hard work of, of working in my house and discipling my kids. And you're still a part of this message because what if God is actually going to use that for you to train other moms, to disciple people, yeah. to one day write a book about that, to yeah. one day start a business from what you learn? Like, there's so many ways that this can be outworked. I think yeah. the temptation if for people to be like, well, I'm not, maybe I'm not a leader of that sort, or maybe that's God doesn't have something like that in my yeah. future. Yep. And he might not, but it might be something of yeah. that light where he has to prepare yeah. you and for what he has thing. prepared for you. So I think that yeah. it's for all of us. And yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I can just say to anybody doubting themselves in the story, yeah. just for what it's worth, nobody is going to be like Moses. No, nobody is. <laughs> Nobody's going to no. return to a land where no. people where 3 million people are in slavery. Yeah. And you're going to miraculously yeah. release them from the grip of Pharaoh. Yeah. So just because your life isn't at the scale of leadership you think totally. it should be, the whole point of scripture, it kind of on purpose yeah. is saying, yeah, yeah, it's not about being a great leader like Moses, yeah. having the same size of a no. platform as Moses. It's about the principles. It's about the principles. And if we can yep. grab on the principles, it will help us 100%. in our parenting, in our yeah. marriages. In and our everyday, ordinary lives. Whatever our lives. work is. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I no, think it's so good. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> so, so <laughs> talk to me. Okay, so let's talk about it. So let's go through our first point. So what has been an example in your life where you feel like like the timing has been an issue for you? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if we want to talk about um, our early years before we got married mm -hmm. or like some dreams of ministry in your heart mm -hmm. where like you wrestled with the timing of mm -hmm. something or maybe you jumped too soon mm -hmm. and you actually were like, you, you, you're you like, dang it, I should, I, I, it wasn't, I wasn't ready for that yet. Mm -hmm. I needed to pull back. What are mm -hmm. some like everyday examples, maybe of some failures yeah. or maybe of some wins of when yeah. you got it right? Yeah, no, I think it's a good question. I, I think timing's so important and I've learned in our walk with God, like often his timing is different than ours. I think I've always had a slower timing and it seems like in my life, God's often pushed us faster than I've wanted to go. I would agree with that. Uh, honestly, yeah. I think there's been you're, times. You're, you're not a fast moving person. Like you're yeah, slow like to decisions Yeah, like when I, when I know way. a decision needs to be made, I'm yeah. happy to make it and yep. let's do it. But otherwise I like to kind of sit and wrestle and think and yep. I can be a little slow to yep. the uptick. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes God's been like, hey, Eric, you need to be directed by my, the, the, I direct the order of your steps. Right. I'm asking you to pick up the pace. Yeah. I'm asking you to move. Sometimes we preach that and I think it's always about us going too fast. That's a great perspective. Us outrunning yep. God. Mm. I don't know if I've ever outran God in anything in my yep. life. I think I've always been scared and too slow. <laughs> hmm. I've been nervous. And um, and I think God's always challenged me to go, no, you need to move. Like you need to take this step in this direction. Yep. Um, I mean, there's so many examples. Like I think us is an example. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I, I think I really wrestled early on in our dating life with uh, not just like commitment to a relationship, I think wanting to please the Lord yeah. and wanting to make sure every aspect of my life. And I think I believed this thing that if I gave you too much of my heart, then I it like wouldn't be got me giving that. Like it'd be almost me taking that from God. Like you couldn't do both. And giving that to right? you, like they'd be disloyal. And so it caused me a lot of, for a lot of years of Angst. our early dating to be very angsty and yeah. afraid and nervous and not, um, not probably taking the steps that were necessary uh, in our relationship until yeah. God finally got a hold of me and said, yeah. "Hey, Eric, hey, I've hey. <laughs> given you the desires of your heart. Right. I'll give. Like, what what do you want? It's time to move. If yeah. you don't move now, yeah. you'll lose out." Yeah. And I remember a conversation with my dad, which I really felt was like God speaking to me in it early on in our dating, where my dad was basically like, "Hey, you've kind of like been a roller coaster of emotions and commitment for Alexa." if you, you are lucky she's still around. If you don't make a move now, you'll miss out. She's gone. And yeah. I remember like almost like hearing that was like the voice of God, like, all right, this is my time. Like I'm, it's time for me to move. It's time for me to commit. It's time for me to jump both feet in head first. And honestly, I wanted to, my heart wanted yeah, to, yeah, I was yeah. so in love with you. It was, it was your logic as you're thinking. Yeah. Yep. Like getting mm -hmm. onto God's timing yeah. was so valuable there. Yep. Like getting into getting in step with him. If I would have delayed and delayed yeah, and yeah. delayed, I think I would have been in a world of trouble. No, I think that's great. I think it's a good perspective that sometimes waiting on God, it, like w sometimes living with God's timing is waiting. Yeah. But w w what we don't have to talk about is sometimes living with God's timing is doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that that's important. I think for, for me, I think back to a time when I was learning to wait on God. And uh, we both were younger when we felt younger. When we were younger, we felt called to ministry. Yeah. And I remember you wanted to go straight to Bible school, but your parents were like, nope, I want you to go to college. Yeah, I want sure. you to get a four-year degree. Yeah. 
And you are okay to do that, but there was some waiting there. And I think for me, it was the same during those years of like, God, I have so much in my heart. Like I want to do, like I want to, I, w- I want to preach the gospel. I want to go build the church. Like I have a dream in my heart, but I'm like 21 and I'm yeah. in college. And yeah. what I actually really need to be focusing on is just like being yeah. in college. Yeah. I'm never going to get these years back. Yeah. I, I look back to that time and I'm like, I wish that I would have, I wish somebody would have just told me like, Hey, Alexa, you'll be okay. Yeah. Like God will get you where he needs to get you. Like you can just actually en- enjoy yeah. these time, this time where God's helping to teach you and to train you and to form you. Like this is just as important mm-hmm. as the time when you're being sent, mm-hmm. right? Like the, this, this time of waiting, this time of preparing, this time of training, it's all equally valuable. Yeah. Yep. You can't skip it. Like you, there is no like run around yeah. to this. Like you, you won't be able to get where you're going if you try to skip the process. Yeah. So I feel like I wish I would have, I wish somebody would have looked at me and been yeah. like, Hey, just relax. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're okay. Yeah. God, God's faithful yeah. enough to get you where he needs to take yeah. you. So just like be where you're at yeah. and yeah. let yourself be formed yeah no I, I think that's huge. and have fun i think it's huge yeah. i i think i think that could probably be said time and again in every season of your life yeah. like you're never you're not getting today back yeah. you're not getting to be- today back. you're not getting this season of work you're not yeah. getting these relationships these co-workers you have you're not getting these moments back with your family no. with your parents with your children so like be where you are yeah. and i think it's so cheesy like and even saying it, it like i kind of like rubs against me because yeah. i like hate like that was so cheesy, but like you need Cringe. to be all where you are. You need to be where you're at, yeah. And uh, and the truth is, God wants you to be all where you are. Like yeah. I remember that you know that scripture Jesus talks about worry, and about worrying about the yeah. future and worrying about what's to come and worrying about you know the clothes on your back and the food on your table. And he said there are so many worries. Today's worries are enough. Totally. So let tomorrow's worries come when they come. Yep. Focus on today. Yep. And, um, and I think that pace of life, focusing on sure. today, the yeah. step One day today, at a time. Yeah. for some of us, pick it up. Yeah, pick for it others up. <laughs> of us, maybe, hey, it's slow it down, be yeah. in the moment, but, but timing's do, so valuable. Timing's so valuable. And I think that, I think that the reality is, I'd love to talk about this though, and we talked about this a little bit last yesterday as we were kind of debriefing the message, is that sometimes when we're in a waiting season, mm-hmm. we can think that it's not active or we're kind of just yeah, like yeah. not doing much, Great. but that's actually not true in the right. story of Moses. But when Moses was was at, in the desert mm-hmm. for 40 years waiting on God, right, he was actually working his yeah. butt off yep. and he was working for his father-in-law, yeah. which I know a little bit about that, okay? Yeah. I know it wasn't easy for Moses. He was like, he, he was waiting, yes, but he was actually like doing so much. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. working so hard. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, that are in that season where like I'm waiting I'm I'm kind of in the early stage of my career I'm waiting f- for that mm-hmm. promotion I'm waiting to grow into all God has for me I'm waiting to yeah. x y and z right I think that like what what's really important to remember is that there's a lot of hard work to do in yes. the waiting yes. and I remember when I was waiting to be in ministry waiting to be a pastor I think the best thing that I felt like the Lord helped to encourage me mm-hmm. in is like there are things that you'll have to wait for, but there are things that you can do right now yeah, yeah. in the waiting that's going to develop you yeah. and prepare you quicker than if you don't do it. Yep. So I, I remember him encouraging me like, hey, what if you lived like you were a pastor right now? Yes, what if you wrote right. messages? What if when you read the Bible and something spoke to you, mm-hmm. you actually took the time and you 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 wrote a whole content? Like yep. what if you actually in your waiting put your put your skills into practice right. when nobody's around. I remember like there was, there was years and years and years in my life that were just in the hidden part of my life. I worked for somebody as a ghostwriter mm-hmm. and I wrote probably, I wrote probably 200 mm-hmm. devotionals, mm-hmm. like, like two page devotionals and not for me. And my name's not attached to it, just a ghostwriter. But you know what that did for mm-hmm. me? It gave me so many skills mm-hmm. for when we were actually put into this position to be able yep. to look back and be like, okay, I'm not a complete novice. No, yep. I'm a novice in many areas. Yep. But I think that if I were to just be like, okay, God, I'm just waiting on you. Like when the time comes, you'll you'll give me this position, you'll give me this platform, and then I'm just gonna be, no, no, no. Like there is a sense that we were thrown into it, but there is a sense that God was developing us yeah. in so many ways that if we didn't put our hand to the plow in the waiting, we wouldn't have been ready yeah. for the sending. So I just think that's important. Like. Yeah. It, waiting is hard work yeah. and it's not just like, oh, I'm holding myself back. No, no, no. I'm not holding myself back. Yep. I'm pushing myself forward in all the hidden areas of my yep. life that nobody sees because I believe 
believe that God has me waiting for a reason yep. that like one day these skills are going to be useful. Yes. I'm not just writing this Devo for nobody. Like yep. I know that one day this stuff that what you've worked in me, I know you're going to get it out. Yep. So I, I'm not going to be lazy in the waiting. I think it's huge. Waiting has this connotation like it's passive. Totally. Like you think of a waiting room, right? Of a, of a hospital. Like I'm just sitting sitting in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. I'm literally sitting here killing time, looking at my phone until the doctor comes in or whatever. Yeah. Biblical waiting has never been passive. Not that. Biblical waiting is always active. Mm -hmm. When you're waiting on God for a promise, when you're waiting on God for a next step, when you're waiting on God for the dream in your heart, it always, always, always means I'm doing something. I'm that serving. I'm, I'm putting working. my hand to the yeah. plow. I'm working. I'm developing. I'm training to the like, person who's waiting on a spouse. What does it mean for me? It means, yes, I'm going on some dates. I'm trying to find yeah. a spouse. I'm going to become the that, best spouse I'm one working day. on me. Mm -hmm. I, waiting isn't passive. I'm sitting here kind of yep. getting fat and lazy until the right person comes across. No, I'm I'm getting healthier, mm -hmm. stronger. I'm I'm learning how to be everything God's called me to yeah. be. I'm becoming the best version of me. Yeah in the waiting for the person waiting for their career advancement. I'm being faithful with what's in my hand. Yeah. I'm giving my all to it. I'm I'm giving I'm, I'm the first one to show up and the last one to leave. Yeah. I mean I'm I'm applying the kind of person I want to be. Yeah. Whenever I get there one day, I'm going to do that today. Totally. Right where I am and that's what Moses does. In fact, that's what everybody in scripture yeah. who goes through this hidden anonymous years, this hidden anonymous season of their life. That's what they do. They put their hand of the plow in the waiting. Absolutely. And it's always there that God will meet you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, so I think it's huge. It's a huge difference. It's a huge difference. I have this story when we were in Bible school um, because we were in the pastoral track. There was like a worship track. What was the other one? Like a creative track sure. and a Bible, uh, a pastoral track. And there was one day that somehow they were giving out stickers, but it was based on like your track. So it would be like worship, Tara, you know, whatever, whatever. And then my sticker said pastor, Alexa, mm. but it read like Pastor Alexa. And I, I took that sticker and I put it in my Bible on the front page. Mm. And I and I felt like it was just like a prophetic promise of like, I know who I'm going to grow into. Yeah, this is what I'm studying this for. This is what I'm studying for. Yeah. This is what I'm training for. Great. Whether it takes three years or 30 years, like this is my direction. Mm -hmm. So Lord, like grow me into yeah. who you need me to be That's to great. fulfill your will for my life. That's great. So maybe for somebody, you need to like have a little vision. You need to like write something down. Yeah. You need to have a prophetic picture yeah. of where God's taking you yeah. so that you can direct your life in yeah. that way, even in the waiting. Yeah. And then in this dual sense, what's so fascinating to me is that you're always, the thing to learn, especially when you're young, I'm thinking of like yeah. young people on the podcast, is right now, most of your life is feels like waiting. <laughs> most of it feels like preparation. When you're in high school and college, when you're in the early days of your career, so much of what you're doing really is yeah. training ground, Building is preparation foundation. time. But here's what I want you to know. Preparation time never stops. Yeah. Meaning, hey, we've stepped into, me and you have stepped into some dreams of our heart, into some places of calling now. But you know what? I still feel like we're still in waiting. 100%. I still feel like God's preparing us right now. He's asking us to be faithful with what's in yeah. our hand. He's developing skills and character yeah. and thought yeah, and stop. wisdom mm -hmm. uh, for where we're going. That there's a future ahead of us that's so much bigger than where we are today. That in the biggest sense, we're still in preparation. Mm -hmm. we're st I'm still in college. I'm still in that waiting ground. Yeah, I'm doing some things and putting my hand to the plow. But if you don't learn those skills to work hard in your younger days, when you get to these days, you're still required to work hard, yeah, harder, harder, and you still have a bigger future ahead. Yeah, so it kind of, it progresses yeah. with you, this lifestyle of waiting and mm -hmm. working, waiting and working, totally. waiting and working. It's always there. It's always there. And it's not, it's not dictated by the external. Yeah, it's yeah, what yeah. I hear you saying. Exactly. It's the internal position of your heart. Doesn't matter what I'm, I'm doing. I'm waiting on God and I'm working for him. I'm waiting on him. I'm working for him. I'm yeah. letting him lead me out and take me in. Mm -hmm. Like it's a position of your heart, no matter what's in your hand, yeah, yeah. which I think is so important. hundred percent. And yeah. we're kind of bleeding into two things we yeah. talked about because we talked about timing mm. and where Moses got his timing wrong is when he jumped out to kill this right. Egyptian man hide him in the sand. Moses, again, tried to produce an exodus experience. Right. Right. 40 years too soon. <laughs> 40 years too soon. And we're talking about timing, learning the voice of God, taking his steps. And then we're talking about this kind of thing called uh, training, right? This like training territory, this anonymous hidden years of your life, seemingly anonymous mm -hmm. and hidden. It can feel like God's not there sometimes. It can feel like God's, God, do you not see me? Like, do you not have a plan for me? But he is. He's actually, again, yeah. doing his best work right there in those seasons. 
Um, but then we get to this point of sending, mm -hmm. right? When, hey, like, yeah, you, you did a good job being faithful with your studies. You did a good job being faithful, you know, as a single person. You did a good job being faithful waiting for children. You did a good job being faithful in that organization for 20 years. You were steadfast and loyal, but guess what? Now it's your time to lead. Yep. Now it's your time to step out. Now it's your time to launch your own business, to start your own ministry. Now it's your time to write a book. Now it's your time to go get married and have kids. Like when the sending happens, I talked about it yesterday, but I do think it's so true. I think me and you have felt this. The ironic thing about the sending seasons of our life, you know, like Jesus sends out the disciples. Mm -hmm. He was with them and then he sent them. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference of I'm with Jesus, preparing, learning, training. Oh, now Jesus just sent me. Like, you're not coming with me to you're do this? You're like not here? <laughs> the disciples go out. There's, there's, there's a different tone there. When you get to the sending moments of life, the ironic thing is they actually end up proving to be so much harder and less desirable than what you thought. Like, yeah. you spend years of your life waiting. And then finally, God gets you to the sending. And I, I think this is a good thing. Because yeah. I think you finally get humble enough. Yeah. I think you finally get ripped of selfish ambition totally. enough. I think you finally get pruned enough to realize, all right, God, if we're going to do that dream, that vision, that goal, God, I don't know if I can do it. Mm -hmm. And I remember for me and you, when we had this thing presented and we started walking through a transition process yeah. here at the church that, for those who don't know, took over um, a, a large church, my mom and dad's church, uh, a number of years ago. And and I remember getting to that phase. It's like, man, I spent my whole life right. from the time I was in middle school. God put yeah. this in my heart. When I was in high school, God developed and trained and, and was doing a work in me to get. When I got to college, I didn't go to business school to do business. I went to right. business school to be in ministry, right. to learn the fundamentals of how to lead an organization. When I went to Bible college, I knew exactly what was in my heart to do. You spent years of your life preparing. And when finally we got to the point where it's like, oh, wow, this is actually happening. Mm -hmm. I remember so many moments in conversations with you and even conversations with my mom and dad of, guys, I don't know if I'm ready. Like, I... I want to wait another five more I, years. <laughs> I'm good to wait. Like, I'm not yeah. in a rush. Uh -huh. I don't need to... We, we, we can transition this thing later. Let me train. There's probably... Hard, I need to learn how to have that hard... I, I need to learn more. I, I don't know enough. I'm not ready. And, uh, and I had to kind of come to terms and with God's help, come to terms. No, son, you are ready. Yeah. Here's the truth about being ready. You're, You're never, never ready. ready. Yeah. I'm not ready to have kids. Here's the truth about being ready You'll to have kids. You'll never be ready to have kids. There's never a moment in your life no. you'll think you're ready. I'm not ready no. to be married. There's no, I'm not ready to step into, I'm not ready to launch my own business. You'll never be ready. And so if I, you never sow a seed, you'll never get a harvest. Yeah, yeah. so you got to mm -hmm. go. You got to go. So God's mm -hmm. sending us into this new season this new space in our life. And I'm like, God, I'm not ready. I feel like I don't know enough. I feel like I've not been tested maybe enough. I feel like, I feel like I, how do I lead people who are twice my age? How do I speak into massive theological topics for our church? I'm so young, God, like, what do I know? Like I've read a lot, I've studied, I've worked, but I'm not as smart as a 50, 60 year old, someone who's been through a lot of years. Like, God, I'm not, I don't feel ready. And it's like, no, like Moses, you come to that place of yeah. sending and there's only one response to learn. Yeah. Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> here I am, God. Here I am. In all my flaws and in all my strengths and in all my weaknesses, and, here I am. And I'll go. Yeah. And you know what? I trust you with the timing. I trusted you in my training and I'm going to choose to trust you in the sending. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose that the same way you've been faithful with me, steadfast, helping me every step to this point. Now it's time for, I'm going to trust you. Yep. I'm going to trust that you'll be there. You'll help me. You'll guide me. I'm going to trust that my, my face, my name's going to get put out there a little bit. I'm going to feel insecure about that. It's going to be hard for me. I'm going to doubt myself. I'm not going to know how do I write another message? How do I lead another meeting? How do I bring another thought for our staff? How do I step into an executive room and, and, and give direction and insight all constantly? How do I do that? I don't know. I'm going to trust God. You'll meet me there every time. Every time. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to step out. And I love Moses' response. 80 years of life. He's minding his own business, yep. right? Like He's learned to be content. Like after 40 years of being in the wilderness, you're good. You're not looking for God to show up anymore. You're looking for another 40 years in the wilderness. Like you've got yeah, it situated. You got, you yeah. got your retirement. You got your successor. You're like, I'm going to go. You're going to take over from your father-in-law. I'm going to go and just like, I'm going to just do this, be done. It's all good. Yeah. I like being a shepherd now. Yes. I'm good. Yeah. When he least expects it, mm -hmm. God shows up. And of all the responses that he could have had, God, I'm not ready. God, I don't want to. God, I refuse it. 
God, I'm actually mad at you, kind of. He doesn't do any of that. He turns towards the bush. He hears his name being called. And he says, here I am. Yeah. God, here I am. Yeah. I don't know what you have for me. I don't know what the future looks like. I don't even know necessarily what you're going to direct me to do. Mm. But my posture of my heart is, yeah. I'm here. here. I am. And uh, like I, you know, Prophet Isaiah said, here I am, send yeah, me. Yeah, send me. Uh, and, and so I think for us yeah. in our life, me and you, I think for those listening, I want you to know the timing and the training is for a purpose. Yeah, it's <laughs> not for nothing. It's always for sending. Yes. Always for sending. If you've not had ever a sending in your life, you've been living, and I know some people. <laughs> we were at Bible school, and I know some people who like to hang around Bible schools. And I'm not calling anybody out on this. Yeah. Some people I know, oh, yeah, I've been a part of this Bible school now for five years. Yeah, but I just feel like God wants me here another year. I know a out. decade goes by. I know some people, I've stuck around 15 years. I haven't done much. I've been still working for this. And I just kind of, no, there's, there, there needs to be a sending. Yeah. If there's not a sending in your life, if it's just a waiting, a training, at some point in your area, you got to send, you got to be yeah. sent. And I want to encourage you, trust God. Yeah, trust God. Go for it. Yeah. Step out, take a risk, make a hard decision, do something that challenges you. Uh, cry, be afraid, like jump off the edge and fail. Live. Like, live. 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 Go. When God calls your name, go. Stop resisting it. Yeah. Stop resisting go it. Go and trust me to send I think what's interesting, we can, you know, wrap it up a little bit, but I think what's interesting with the story of Moses is that when he finally gets to that point of encountering God in the burning bush and, and he says, here I am, Lord, here I am, <clears throat> what God's about to do in his life, the, the journey he's going to take him on is probably so different than what Moses would have anticipated mm -hmm. it looking like. Mm -hmm. Moses knew the basics. He mm -hmm. knew that God was going to use him most likely to help his people, to set them free. But I think that what's interesting is that if Moses would have known the whole story, all the challenge to come, all the resistance he was going to face, mm -hmm. The 40 or how long were they? They were in the wilderness for 40 yeah, more years. Yeah. The 40 more years ahead yeah. where he was going to lead people who were complaining, yeah. who were didn't have any faith. Like, yeah. I don't know if Moses would have said, here I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think that sometimes God doesn't give us the whole picture, because if we had the whole picture, we would be really hesitant to say yes, because sometimes, oftentimes, most of the times, the dreams that are in our hearts, the things that we picture for our future, there are pieces of them that are correct, mm. that are from God. We have it right. But it often will look a lot different, a lot harder, a lot a lot of more of a challenge than we anticipate. Yeah, yeah. We anticipate the dreams, the success, the, oh, I love it. God's like, yeah, yeah, it's all that. Yes, it's the calling. But you don't even see the challenges yeah, that are ahead yeah, that I'm yeah. going to get you through. Yeah. And I think that's interesting for Moses. Like he had his life was chronicled by yeah. 40 years in the palace, 40 years in the desert. Mm -hmm. And then he was going to have 40 years in the promise, right, yeah. of leading people it, it, to, to the eventual promised land that he actually doesn't even, yeah. like we talk about this, he doesn't even get to enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's just interesting. I think for us, like today, if you feel like there's a dream within your heart, whether that's for ministry, whether that's for business, whether whatever you feel called to, and you like, I see it this way. Yeah. I want to encourage you to have your hands open yeah. to how God sees it. Yeah, 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 because great. often how God sees it is slightly similar to yeah. how we see it, yep. but it's much different. Yeah. And rather than saying, I need all the details, God, I'm not going to move until you tell me every single yeah. step. God, I'm not going to move until you tell me the whole plan. I'm not going to move until you give me the whole vision. He doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. His word is a lamp unto our feet. It, it, like It's one step at a time mm -hmm. with God. So I think the best thing we can say is like Moses here I am. Lord. Yeah, no, it's great. So good. I agree. Yeah. And I'm having this thought now and we'll close here because uh, this chat's been great. It's encouraging me. Um, and this is just progression in our life, right? Yeah. And I think everybody listening, they probably finds himself in a different point. When Moses was 40 and he comes out to his Hebrew people and he kills this Egyptian man who's beating a Hebrew, he, he at that point is trying to produce an exodus. He's like, guys, yeah. let's go. In every sense of the word, Moses is saying at 40, here I am. Here I am. Here I am, guys. Use it's me. me. It's I'm me. amazing. I've been yeah. raised in the palace. I understand the Hebrew. I'm going to deliver you. I'm ready. I'm your guy. Come on, follow me. Shouldn't you just jump on? And the people didn't respond. They said, who are you? You're not our prince. Moses had this kind of here I am, but mm -hmm. the here I am was all about him. Here, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, now 40 years later, God's now taking him on this beautiful progression, this journey in the desert 
so many lessons, so much training done that now, Moses thought the sending was then. Hmm. Now, after all this journey with God, he sees the burning bush. And now his here I am is different. Mm-hmm. It's, humi- it's, it's, it's with humility. His here I am isn't, yeah. isn't arrogant. Yeah. It's not brash. It's not look at me. It's not come on, follow me, everybody. His here I am is, God, here I am. Here I am. Flawed and all, old, been through it, but I'm back and I'm willing to do it your way this time. Yeah. And uh, as we'll find, and I'm sure we'll get into this next week, and our podcast, we definitely will in the sermon. Yeah. God has quite a future ahead. Yeah. Uh, and the story really is just beginning for Moses. I think the story is just beginning for you, wherever you're listening, watching from today, what God's doing in your life. Trust him with your timing. Step by step, he will order every which way you need to go. Trust him with your training. No matter what season you're in, be faithful with what's in your hand. And come on, trust him with your sending. He knows where to push you and when. Let's say, hey, God, here I am. You can send me. Love you guys. Thanks for joining us for the Cutting Room Floor podcast. Can't wait to see you again next time. See ya.